Hello, my name's Andrea Coleman and I am going to demonstrate for you my Art Felt Picture Felt Making Kit of the Coral Reef with Clownfish. The kit's available to buy from my website artfelt.co.uk Before we get started, I just would like to show you what you get inside your kit. You get instructions and template, a piece of foam with a felting needle, bubble wrap, a piece of net and knitted lamb's wool fabric that's been specially knitted for me, soap flakes, thin plastic, you have pure merino fleece in 11 different colours, some merino yarn and silk fibres. What you will need is a empty bottle and some sharp scissors. Right, I'm going to start by making the pre-felt for the turtle. I'm using brown and grey. I'm going to divide the grey in half and we're going to use the other half later for the rocks in the background and then we'll divide it in two again and with this we are going to make the first layer and I'm going to just trap a thin bit with my forefinger and then pull away we're making it about the size of a small postcard it can be quite approximate and the thinner the amount you trap, the better. So I'm doing a little bit of the brown and now I'm doing a little bit of the grey. Now I know it's hard when you first start to get these thin layers but the most, the biggest problem people have are, are trapping too close together so it's incredibly hard to pull out. If it feels tough, just pull Move your hands apart and pull away. So I have actually got quite a lot left, but don't worry, use it all up if you need to. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to go in the opposite direction. So this is called layer one, and this is going to be layer two. I'm just pulling it out. So I'm keeping the brown on the brown part. Like that. And the grey is going on the grey part. And don't worry about all these thin edges. They will just mingle in and we could cut them up and use them much later on um, and it's quite nice if the colours mix a little bit it can look quite nice so in the meantime um, also before you start I should have told you to mix up your soap and water because we can now get it ready and pour it on Don't worry about the edges, just in the middle and then grab your thin plastic, place it on top, press down, do this for at least a minute. I've been patting this for about a minute, now I'm going to put some soapy water on top which will help my hands slide across because I'm going to now rub it. You might have to hold your with one hand down at first. I'm going to do this for a minute and don't worry if the whole thing slides that's fine and you rub across. It's just a matter of the pressure you put on it. I'm going to do this for a minute and then I'm going to quarter turn and do it for another minute like this and then another minute like that and finally a minute again like this so you've done in all the different directions a total of four minutes you'll need to put quite a bit of pressure on it in your last minute 
I've been rubbing this for four minutes in total and now if I pinch it can you see it all comes up I can't really pull up the thin fibers if yours feels soft and spongy don't worry just repeat the rubbing process and put a bit more pressure on it it's important that it feels quite strong I've finished the brown and grey and I've squeezed out the excess water and I will put it somewhere to dry. I have done exactly the same with the orange using the three colours of orange, the dark, the mid orange and the pale orange and again I've banded them in the three different colours. You might have to rub that one a little bit longer because it's a bit bigger. I've done exactly the same with the white and I've used a little bit of this multicoloured silk fibres on top and I've left half of it free because we're going to use half of this for your white stripes on the clownfish. I have now cut out the template for the turtle. You cut the undershell from the brown pre-felt the tail, the head and two flippers from the grey pre-felt. You also can cut the top shell from the knitted fabric. There's also enough for you to do two turtles and if you like you can mirror them by turning the template upside down if you want them facing each other. I have placed both the flippers on the undershell and used the felting needle to keep them in place and now I'm putting the knitted shell on top of that so the undershell still shows and I'm going to poke it into place. So I've now picked it up and turned it over and I've done a few extra pokes on this side and I'm now going to put the plate the head in place and the tail and I will secure them with the felting needle as well. So now I have two turtles facing in different ways. I am now going to show you the pink clownfish this fish is the most complex of the fishes in this kit and if you want to do a simpler fish you can do multiples of the simpler fish but let me show this one to you. I've cut out using the template the shape of the body and the fins and it doesn't matter what colours of the orange you use, I'll leave that up to you. I have a tendency to use the darker colour for your top fins. Now taking a small amount of the white pre-felt you made earlier, I'm going to place it on the fish and I've curved it round a little bit and I'll just do a few pokes like that and then I'll turn it over and trim off that bit there. You don't have to go too close in we will trim it again later and then I'm going to do exactly the same here. I've put the white stripes in place I've now taken two centimeters of the navy blue roving and then I just separated a very thin amount I've rolled it in my fingers and just place it on the edge of the white and secure with the felting needle. You can do that on each edge. So I've placed the navy blue either side and now I'm going to turn it over and I will snip off the excess bits that you see from this side. I have now put the two top fins in place and I will secure them with the felting needle.
I am now prepared the side fin. I've added a piece of the navy blue yarn and I've also cut out a piece of the thin plastic. This will create a barrier between the fish and your fin. So I've put the two in. I'm going to poke just this end at first of the fin and then you can slide that in as close as possible and then poke through all of it. This will help hold it in place. If you want you can always add a little bit more of the white over this. It's completely up to you. These are the three other designs of fish that you can put in your picture. You can, I've made seven fish, but if you want to make more, you can. So this one, I have done it in, in the same way with the barrier. I've also added a little spot here, because some clownfish have these spots. Uh, this one is slightly different, so it will have two eyes when you've finished and we'll add a, a top fin to the middle, but that's when it's dry. This one here is probably the simplest fish with the top fin and the side fin. All these fishes can be done in a mirror as well, so they're facing the opposite direction, and I leave it up to you which colours of orange you want to use where. If you find it tricky getting the ends of the fins, the blue on, you can put it on and then trim it back later. To make the hedgehog fish, I've used the pre-felt we made earlier the bit that had the multi silk on it and I like it when it goes in a vertical direction and then I've placed a little bit of the white pre-felt behind and secured it with the felting needle and then I have um, just cut into it with scissors to make the spikes. Cut out your net fish and now we're ready to assemble the fishes you've made. I find it helpful when I'm making a picture to place all the cut out fish and everything I will need on a sheet of paper so you can get a clear picture of what it's going to look like. You can then put it to one side and start on the background. Now we're ready to start the background. We're going to do it in three layers. Uh, I'm going to show you how to divide the colours so that you've got the right colours for the background. So this one I'm going to divide into three pieces. So keep your hands far apart and never cut. So one two, three. And then this one I'm going to divide in two. So I'm going to take half of this big one here. You can be quite um, approximate with this. So these are going to be the colours for your third and final layer. This is going to be the colours for your middle layer and we just start with this colour for your first layer. Using the light sea green colour we're going to work just like you did with the pre-felt. We're just going to trap and pull away, trap and pull away. We're going to make it about the same size as two A4's short end to short end. So that's about 600 by 200. Now I'm going to start the second layer. Using the dark sea green, I am going to lay it around the sides 
and across the bottom. So I'll divide it into two approximately and taking a small bit I will just start over on the sides and carry on through the bottom. So I've placed the dark sea green along the bottom and the two edges and now I'm going to fill the rest up with the light sea green, same way. This is the third layer that I've nearly completed. I, I've started with the dark sea green um, on the sides and towards the bottom side. And, and then also I've done a line of the sand colour along that edge. And I have then been mingling all the different sea colours together. And you can see if you just take very small amounts you can place them on the picture and build up a nice colour of the sea. Once you're happy with that, you can then put some silk fibres on top. So just pull very thin pieces out. Don't use all of it because you might want to add a little bit later on. To make the rocks I just put a little bit of the grey in my hand and then I roll it about for a bit and then place it. So I'll put a few rocks here, I'll do exactly the same on the other side and if you want you could place a few in the middle as well. You can chop up the leftover bits of the brown and grey pre-felt and add that to your rocks like this. Also little bits of the knitted fabric you can pull it apart and add that as well. And another thing you can do is take some of your navy blue, your grey and your multicoloured silk and pull it apart until it's nicely mixed and then take small amounts, roll it as you did with the other rocks and then place. I've now got my rocks in place and I've added little bits of the knitted fabric and the multi silk and some of the old bits of pre-felt and I've also put a coral in place. I start with the navy blue so that it, it can create shadows and depth. So I cut a piece of yarn, I roll one end in my fingers like that and then I can open up the top and I can just do little twists to create the branches. and then I can put it into place if you like, just tuck it under a rock. Then you can carry on and add all the other colours as well. I've put the, all the corals in place and if you want you can add a little bit of sand to it and also the multi silk if you would like to looks really nice and the you if you want you could put a little bit of the blue silk as well it's fine if it goes over your corals like so and then you're ready to put your fish on and i start with the net fish to begin with I have now put the net fish on and I've put a little bit of silk on top of them. I've put the hedgehog fish in place. I've put the turtles and the clown fish in place and not forgetting cutting out some starfish out of what's left over of your pre-felt. 
important thing to remember here is don't put your fish too close together otherwise when when we shrink it down they'll get even closer. I'm now ready to get it wet. I've saturated the picture with the soapy water, make sure it's warm and I've put the thin plastic on top and I've been patting it down for at least 15 minutes. The longer you do this the better, it's really important because if you don't do this then things will move and um, distort. So then I'm going to put the soapy water on top and rub it as we did earlier and this time we'll do the four directions but because it's a lot bigger I suggest you do two minutes in this direction like that and then I, because it's big and you can't reach the other end turn it round and do another two minutes from the other end and then turn it this way do four minutes and upside down four minutes and then repeat the two minutes and two minutes I've done all my rubbing now it's quite normal for it to be a bit stronger in the middle and softer at the edges if that's the case just get at the edge and rub it directly on your bubble wrap if your felt is still quite spongy and soft I also recommend you turn the whole thing over and then you can work with your bubble wrap in really rubbing hard on the back don't worry, you can't damage it. So I've rubbed it on the back and I, it's ready to rinse out with water. I recommend that you leave those plastic bits in and take them out when it's dry. You must be really careful and snip them out, don't pull them out. But if one's fallen out like this one has here, don't worry about it, just leave it, it'll be fine. My work's dry now and I have taken out the thin bits of plastic. Please don't pull them out, just um, snip them away if you need to and that releases the fin. If you need to, you can do a few pokes to strengthen the fin. Then I use the felting needle at an angle to straighten up any stray fibres and in, improve the shape, so like that. Never put any pressure on your needle because it, you can break it. So just quite gentle, small pokes at a time and have your foam under your work to do that. And then once you're happy with the shape we can put the eyes in. So I take a tiny bit of the navy blue fleece, and it really is small, roll it in your fingers and then you can decide where you're going to put the eye, make a little dimple, put it on the end of your needle, and again don't poke it hard, just poke it around otherwise it will just shoot back to the other side and disappear. And then if you want you can trim the fin like so. Do exactly the same with your turtle. Tidy up all the edges and add the eye in exactly the same way. And you can do all the fish exactly the same as I just showed you. Even the hedgehog fish, again, add an eye and tidy up its edges. I've now finished making my picture and I hope you've enjoyed watching this tutorial and you enjoy making your own clownfish picture. When it comes to framing, I use double-sided sellotape to keep it in place. Congratulations on finishing your kit. I hope you enjoyed it. 
And if you have and would like to make more, how about trying the puffin kit? All my kits are available on artfelt.co.uk. Bye!